Have you ever wondered how to better manage sickle cell pain? Welcome back to the Victory Education Lounge. I'm your host, Maurice, and today we're tackling a crucial aspect of living with sickle cell disease. Pain Management Mastery, Tackling Sickle Cell Crises, Part 25. Before we dive into this vital topic, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Your engagement helps us reach more people seeking effective ways to manage sickle cell pain. Pain, often the hallmark of this condition, can indeed be challenging, but it doesn't have to define your life. In this episode, we'll delve into five crucial aspects of managing sickle cell pain. First, we'll explore the different types of sickle cell pain and their causes. Then, we'll look at both pharmacological and non-pharmacological strategies for managing this pain. Following this, we'll discuss how to prevent crises by identifying and avoiding triggers. Lastly, we'll touch on the importance of emotional and psychological support in dealing with chronic pain. With a clear understanding of these elements, we'll then dive into real-world scenarios that illustrate different pain management strategies. So sit tight as we embark on this journey towards mastering pain management in sickle cell disease. Meet Zoe, Marcus, Aisha, James, and Sarah all dealing with sickle cell disease in their unique ways. Our first story comes from Zoe, a vibrant 12-year-old who has made hydration her best friend. She knows that dehydration can trigger a sickle cell crisis, so she makes sure to drink plenty of water throughout the day. She carries a water bottle with her everywhere she goes and even sets reminders on her phone to sip regularly. This simple habit has significantly reduced her pain episodes. Next we have Marcus, a 30-year-old, who has found a multimodal approach to be most effective. He takes his prescribed pain medication as directed, but he doesn't stop there. He also uses heat therapy to soothe his aching muscles and joints, coupled with gentle yoga stretches that help him maintain mobility and flexibility. This blend of pharmacological and non-pharmacological strategies helps Marcus manage his chronic pain effectively. Aisha, on the other hand, is a 28-year-old who has embraced mindfulness as a way to cope with her sickle cell pain. She uses meditation and deep breathing techniques to relax her body and mind, reducing stress that could otherwise trigger a pain crisis. Her mindful approach has not only helped her manage pain, but has also improved her overall quality of life. James, a 45-year-old, has worked with his doctor to create a comprehensive home care kit. This kit allows him to manage mild to moderate pain crises at home, without the need for immediate hospitalization. It includes his prescribed medications, a heating pad, a thermometer, and a list of emergency contact numbers. Being prepared helps James feel more in control which in turn reduces anxiety and the potential for a pain crisis. Lastly we have Sarah, a 35-year-old who keeps a detailed pain diary. She records when her pain episodes occur, their intensity, and any potential triggers. She also notes what helps alleviate her pain. This valuable information helps her identify patterns and triggers, which she shares with her healthcare team to refine her pain management plan. These examples show us that there's no one-size-fits-all approach to managing sickle cell pain. Each person's pain experience is unique, and what works well for one person may not work as well for another. The key is to understand your body, work closely with your healthcare team, and find the combination of strategies that works best for you. And remember, it's not just about managing pain, but also about enhancing your overall quality of life. Now let's take a closer look at some key strategies and their pros and cons. First up, we have opioid pain medications. These are potent drugs often used for severe pain. The pros include their effectiveness in managing severe pain and their rapid onset of action. However, the cons are a potential risk of dependence and side effects such as constipation and drowsiness. Therefore, these medications should be used judiciously under the close supervision of a healthcare professional. Next, we have non-opioid analgesics, such as NSAIDs. These are less potent than opioids and are often used for mild to moderate pain. The pros of these medications include a lesser risk of dependence and their effectiveness in managing mild to moderate pain. On the downside, they can cause stomach irritation and may not be strong enough for severe pain crises. The third strategy is hydroxyurea therapy. This medication is used to reduce the frequency of pain crises and improve overall health. The advantages of hydroxyurea therapy include reducing the frequency of pain crises and improving overall health. However, it requires regular monitoring due to potential side effects. Fourth on our list is cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. 
This is a type of psychological intervention that can help improve pain coping skills and address psychological aspects of chronic pain. The pros of CBT include improving pain coping skills and addressing psychological aspects of chronic pain. However, it requires time and effort and may not be readily available to everyone. Lastly, we have complementary therapies such as acupuncture and massage. These can provide additional pain relief and are generally low risk. The pros of these therapies include their potential to provide additional pain relief and their generally low risk. However, their effectiveness may vary and they may not always be covered by insurance. Remember, the best pain management strategy is the one that works for you and fits into your lifestyle. It's critical to discuss these options with your healthcare team and take into account your personal needs, lifestyle, and the severity of your pain. Each strategy has its pros and cons, and what works for one person may not work for another. The goal is to find a balance between effective pain relief and minimal side effects. To sum it up, Managing sickle cell pain is a multifaceted approach. It involves understanding the types of pain, using medication appropriately, exploring non-pharmacological strategies preventing pain crises, and addressing the emotional and psychological aspects of chronic pain. Remember, managing sickle cell pain is not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's a journey of trial and error, patience, and perseverance. And remember, you're not alone in this journey. Reach out to support groups, healthcare professionals, and loved ones. Remember the best pain management strategy is the one that works for you and fits into your lifestyle. Prevention is better than cure, especially when it comes to sickle cell pain. Preventive strategies play a pivotal role in managing sickle cell pain. Imagine being able to minimize the frequency and severity of pain crises, thereby improving your quality of life. That's the power of prevention. The cornerstone of prevention is trigger avoidance. Triggers can vary from person to person, but they often include factors like dehydration, infection, stress, and extreme temperatures. By identifying and avoiding these triggers, you can preemptively ward off many pain crises. For instance, staying hydrated can help keep your sickle cells from becoming too rigid and sticky. An infection can trigger a crisis. So regular hand washing and staying up to date on vaccines is essential. Stress can also precipitate a crisis, so employing stress management techniques like mindfulness, yoga, or even just a relaxing hobby can be beneficial. And when it comes to temperature, it's crucial to avoid extremes, both hot and cold, as they can trigger a crisis. In addition to trigger avoidance, lifestyle modifications can go a long way in prevention. This includes maintaining a balanced diet rich in vital nutrients, engaging in regular but moderate physical activity, and ensuring adequate rest and quality sleep. For example, a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains can help keep your body healthy. Regular physical activity can increase circulation and promote overall well-being, but remember, it's crucial not to overdo it as intense exercise can be a trigger. And finally, sleep is when your body restores itself, so ensuring you're getting plenty of quality sleep is vital. Preventive strategies require a proactive approach to health. They necessitate tuning into your body, understanding what exacerbates your pain, and taking steps to mitigate those factors. It's about creating an environment where crises are less likely to occur, thereby reducing the overall burden of sickle cell pain. Remember, managing sickle cell pain is not just about treating it when it occurs, but also about preventing it from happening in the first place. By identifying and avoiding triggers, you can significantly reduce the frequency and severity of pain crises. Managing sickle cell pain can be a complex journey, but you're not alone. Today, we've navigated through the intricate landscape of understanding sickle cell pain, delved into pharmacological and non-pharmacological strategies, highlighted the importance of crisis prevention and the role of emotional and psychological support. We've seen real-world examples of people just like you making strides in their pain management routines. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all in managing sickle cell pain. It's all about finding what works best for you. Whether it's Zoe's hydration routine, Marcus's multimodal pain plan, or Sarah's pain diary, your strategy should be personalized, adaptable, and effective. Always consult with your healthcare professional to tailor your pain management strategies. Remember, pain is only a part of your life, not the entirety. With the right strategies, you can take control and live a fulfilling life. Before we wrap up, here's a quick disclaimer. The information provided in this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. 
it is not intended as medical advice. Any health-related decision should be discussed with a licensed physician or qualified healthcare professional, especially if you have existing health conditions or are taking medications. Thank you for joining us in the Victory Education Lounge for this exploration of pain management in sickle cell disease. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts below. Your engagement helps us create more content that educates and empowers the sickle cell community. Until next time, this is Maurice, reminding you that with the right strategies and support, you can master your pain and live life to the fullest.